I was 13 when this happened. My parents left on a business trip to LA, so I had to stay home. My dad gave me his card so that I could order whatever I needed, so I kinda enjoyed being alone. And I wasn't scared because I've been home alone so many times, and besides, it was only for three days. Well, this was around the time the clowns were breaking into houses and doing some weird stuff. But they never came to my area since they usually hit more quiet places, especially the area near a forest. Although we had a fence that could easily allow someone to climb over, we didn't really think much about it because the area where we lived in was very safe. Anyway, it was around 6 p.m. and this was in the winter, so it got dark pretty fast. We had a glass room at the back of the house, also known as a conservatory, and it leads straight to the garden. The room was right next to the kitchen. I got a little hungry, so I went to the fridge, took out some snacks, and went back to the living room to continue watching TV. There was a roof on the glass room that intensified any sound that landed on top of it, even the gentlest drop of water. That day, it was raining heavily, so it was too noisy to hear anything except the rainfalls pounding on the roof. About a few minutes later, I was quite sleepy, so I decided to go up to my room and lay down. I was about to grab my phone and check my social media, but then I heard something drop really hard on something downstairs. It really creeped me out. I got really scared but decided to go downstairs to check, thinking that it would be nothing. So I came out of my room, went halfway down the staircase, and looked down the hallway. The whole area was dark, but I knew that someone was standing there. I saw the back of a silhouette. I quickly went to my room trying not to make any noise. Then I heard someone walking around the living room. I immediately called the police and whispered to the operator that I needed help ASAP. <coughs> but all of a sudden, I had a sneezing fit. <coughs> I was so panicked at that moment, so I instantly ran to the bathroom since it was the only room with a lock. As I was reaching the bathroom, he sprinted up the stairs so fast. I locked the door and tried not to cry. The man tried to open the door. He kept turning the doorknob. The bathroom had a small blurry window, but I was able to see outside. So, just then, I got a glimpse of what was at the door. It was a clown, with green hair and without a nose. He was wearing a very weird outfit and was holding a gigantic knife. I had no other choice, so I quickly hopped inside the bath, opened the big window, and jumped out. I slid off the big roof and fell on the concrete. I couldn't even feel my injury because I was so scared. As I was about to hop on the fence, I heard the cops. They entered our house, and after that, they arrested and cuffed him. When he walked past me, I was so scared and my body was shivering. But I was glad that it was over. The police contacted my parents, so they came back home in a hurry. I would see them again, and I knew that I was safe now. From then on, I never stayed at home alone, and that clown guy was in prison for several years for scaring kids and for possible murder. This happened when I was 17 years old. I was a senior in high school. It was the middle of the week and my friends and I were chatting online about wanting to do something new and fun over the weekend. We usually just went to the movies, went to the mall, or got dinner. And I thought we should try something different. The next day, I was in the computer lab for one of my classes, and I had some time to kill because I finished my assignment early. Keep in mind, Snapchat and Instagram were just starting up and didn't have the same kind of popularity as it has today. So the only thing we really had at the time was Facebook. However, my school was strict and blocked Facebook, so the only thing I could really do was read articles on news websites. 
while searching and scrolling through the internet, an article showed up. It was about an interview with a man who was discussing the truth of paranormal activity around the area I grew up in. Intrigued, I read the article and looked up the places the guy was talking about. And sure enough, I found a bunch of things. One place in particular caught my eye. It was a place about 20 minutes away from where I lived. It was known to have multiple paranormal occurrences happen on the exact same road. As soon as class ended, I texted my friends about what I found, and we all agreed on going and seeing what this road was all about Friday night. Friday night finally arrived. It was me and four of my friends. Right before we entered the location, I parked my car and had my friend drive, because we believed that if a guy drove, not much would happen. So she drove my car while I was sitting in the passenger seat. While switching seats, my other friends put baby powder on the top of my car, because one of my other friends had read that it helps people see when ghosts touch or brush your car. It started to drizzle a bit, which bummed us out because the baby powder would be washed away. As we were driving my car, we turned off the radio to make it more suspenseful. All of a sudden, we heard someone from a distance <coughs> scream bloody murder. At that moment, I heard the sound of a car door trying to be opened, as if someone was aggressively trying to get into my car. After that, we saw a police car driving so fast with the sirens on as if they were chasing someone on a major highway. The problem with that was the road was paper thin and had tons of sharp turns, so you couldn't go that fast without crashing into another car. Plus, the car didn't have any of the county police or trooper tags from the area I lived in. I knew that because my dad was a cop, and I saw all kinds of different cop tags in my lifetime. I was freaked out that those two things just occurred. We were all freaked out and drove to the nearest parking lot so that we could calm down. As we got out of the car, one of my friends started to freak out even more. The baby powder on the roof of my car was smeared, and it was all over my passenger seat side door. What was even more creepy was the fact that there were finger marks all over the door. Now this wouldn't normally creep me out, but we were driving the entire time, and we all made sure not to touch the doors when entering the car. The strangest part was that the finger marks had no fingerprints, but were clearly shaped like a hand. It was as if someone was trying to reach for the door handle. Not only that, we also noticed that there were fingernail claw marks on my door handle. This freaked me out because earlier I heard someone violently trying to open my door. In the next few days we told everyone both online and in person about that night and how it freaked us all out. Then someone sent me a link to an article about the street we drove on and all the activity that occurred on it. But it wasn't the one I originally read. It was a different one. As I was reading the website, I started to notice that all the things mentioned also happened to me the same exact way that night. But what freaks me out the most to this day is thinking about what would have happened if I didn't have my door locked with the door have opened up. <laughs> A few days ago, I went to a Macy's store with my mother and son to go check out some jewelry. While my mom was checking out jewelry, I noticed an old man around his 50s come near us. He was about 8 feet from us. At first, I thought he was just a random customer checking something out for his lady or something. Then, from the corner of my eye, I noticed he was just standing there without moving and looking at us. It made me feel uncomfortable, so I turned around moving the stroller, which my toddler was in, because I didn't want him looking at my baby. I turned my eyes to look at him again, and I could see that he was just staring at me with a creepy look. He was staring at me and my baby, then all of a sudden, he grinned widely at us. The weirdest thing about him was that he was wearing women's shoes and a scarf, and also holding a dress in his hand. 
He opened his mouth and tried to say something. I couldn't hear what he was saying, but I could read his lips. I like you. I like your baby. I just thought the man was a weirdo. And then my mom also noticed that he was odd and creepy. He saw that my mom was glaring at him, so he walked away. But then he appeared on the opposite side of us and started staring at me again. This time he pulled his phone out and made it seem like he was about to take a picture. He was staring at us and his eyes opened widely. He was smiling like a crazy psychopath. That was enough. I wanted to go up to him and tell him to get away from us, but I had my boy with me and didn't want anything to happen, so I chose to just get out of there. I told a lady who was working there what happened. She said that she would go take a look at him. A few minutes later, she came back and told us that he was a customer who has been reported before by other people. My mom asked, Why hasn't he been kicked out then? The lady said, Well, because he hasn't threatened or hurt anyone, so the store doesn't have a good enough reason to kick him out. My mom and I were pissed off, because obviously the man is just there to harass people. The lady then told us that he said something creepy to her and also made her uncomfortable. She told us that when she went to go ask him what he was up to, he told her that he went to the store to return a dress. He decided that he didn't like that he bought it for his lady. He told her with a smile, Yeah, I need to change quickly because she's cold now. My mom and I instantly felt so creeped out so we just left. What did that mean? Could he have been hiding a dead body back at his place? A few days later, and I feel relieved that the crazy guy didn't harm us, but I'm still wondering what he meant by, she's cold now. This story happened in the summer of 2017 when I was 10 years old. My older brother and I had a babysitter, and she was around the age of 17. Since my mom was home on Tuesdays, the babysitter would come on the other weekdays. Most days when she babysat, we would go to the neighborhood pool, hang out, and eat lunch there. Then we went back home and my mom would arrive a bit later at around 5.30 in the evening. On one Thursday, the day was just an ordinary one and the babysitter came around 8 in the morning. A few hours later, we decided to head to the pool and eat lunch. We all got ready and headed out the door. As I used to be a little paranoid back then, every time I went outside, I made sure I locked the door and would immediately turn the doorknob and try to open it to make sure it was locked. The door was definitely locked, so we walked to the pool and swam for a while. Then we ate lunch and decided to head back to the house. When we got home, I pulled out the key from my bag, but I noticed that the door was a crack open. I pushed it and the door swung open. A little chill ran down my spine as I remembered that I made sure the door was locked before leaving. My babysitter had a frightened look on her face too. But my stupid brother thought nothing of it and just walked right in, so we followed him. About my house, when you walk into the house, to the right is an entryway to the living room, and straight ahead is a hallway to the kitchen. The stairs are to the right of the hallway, and you can see the upstairs railing from the entrance. We walked into the kitchen and set our stuff down, and I went to go lock the door. After I shut it, I turned back around to go back to the kitchen, but something caught my attention at the corner of my eye. Looking up at the railing, I could see the silhouette of someone crouched behind a tall, narrow floor fan. I looked a little closer, and I could see their eyes. They were wide open and were staring directly at me. I was frozen in fear and couldn't move. 
All I could do was stare back at them, not knowing if it was a man or woman. My babysitter called for me to come to the kitchen, and the figure slowly walked into a nearby room and disappeared. I ran into the kitchen, telling my babysitter and brother what I saw. At first, they didn't believe me, but then, all of a sudden, we were all silent as we heard slow footsteps creaking from upstairs. She quietly grabbed both her phone and a kitchen knife and ushered us to the back door. She slowly turned the doorknob and tried to not make any noise while opening the door. We made it to the backyard and she was going to call 911 on her phone. But before she could, we heard a tapping sound coming from one of the windows on the second floor. So we all looked up and then we saw him. He was a man, late fifties, short black hair, eyes still wide open, staring at us. He was pushing the blinds out of the way, so we saw his face very clearly. We screamed and started running to the gate on the side of the backyard. The babysitter dropped her phone while scared, so I picked it up and ran behind her. I dialed 911, told them our address, and explained to the operator what just happened. She said they would be there in a few minutes, told us to go to a nearby neighbor's house and stay there until the cops arrive. We rang a doorbell a few times and one of our neighbors, who was retired, came outside. He let us in and we explained what happened as we were looking out of the window. Then we saw three cop cars pulling up and the cops were surrounding my home. Three cops headed in through the front door and investigated our house. We went outside to tell them that we were okay, and the other police officers started questioning us. Soon the cops came back after finding nothing and doing a thorough investigation. They told us it would be best to not stay home, as the person may come back. So the babysitter said we could go to her house, which is about a mile away. Just then, we heard our neighbors screaming from down the street. A few houses down, a policeman's car was set on fire and was smoking a lot. The cops spotted a man running past the corner down towards the end of the street. One officer took us to the babysitter's house, while the other three went after that man. We later found out that the man had gotten away so he never got arrested. Our parents arrived home as they were contacted by the police and freaked out. Later that night, we came back to the house and we searched the whole place to see if anything was missing. A cash box that was stored in my parents' bedroom was missing, but we didn't report it since the man was never found. I have no idea who that was or how he opened our front door. I still wonder to this day what would have happened if I never noticed the man. He could have done something to us while we were sleeping. I still feel uneasy sometimes when I'm home alone. It all started one summer afternoon in August. My best friend Mike invited me to his house. Mike was the type of kid you'd call a nerd. He always got good grades, wore glasses, had freckles, and believed in things like dragons and magic. One of Mike's favorite things to do was performing magic for me. Every time I'd come over, he'd perform magic. But this magic trick, though, would be the one that I'd never forget. When I got to Mike's house, he said, I have a new magic trick to show you, and it's the best one. He grabbed my hand and we went into the living room where he had a large box in front of his family photo. It was all four of his family members in that picture, Mike, Josh, and his mom and dad. The box was about his size so he could fit in it, and his older brother Josh was standing next to it. So I sat down on a couch and Mike started introducing the name of his magic trick. It was called The Vanishing. Josh opened the door to the large box where nothing was inside, and Mike walked in. 
after Josh closed the door again. He then said some weird words and then yelled, Poof! Josh slowly opened the box, and Mike was no longer in it. However, I was in the seventh grade, so I was smart enough to know that under the box was a trap door so he could climb down out of it. So I looked down at the bottom of the box, but to my surprise, nothing was there. No door, no secret, no Mike. Just at that moment, my mom called and said that I need to come home right now. I said bye to Josh, grabbed my backpack, and yelled, Nice trick, Mike. Gotta go. Everything was fine, just until the next day. The next day, Mike didn't invite me, but I thought of going to his house again. I ran up to his house, stood in front of the door, and rang the doorbell three times. His dad came out and said, Oh, hello. Nice to meet you. He acted like... Like that he'd never seen me before. It was weird, but I asked, Good afternoon, sir. Is Mike home? Then I could see his confused face, and he answered, Mike? Who is Mike? I felt stupid at that moment, as if I had come to the wrong house. I then quickly asked, Your son Mike? You have two sons. During explaining the situation, I felt irritated, so I pushed him to the side to get into the living room. Josh, I said, pointing to the photo, and M And then, my eyes widened. Mike wasn't in the photo. I was pointing to nothing, which would have been where Mike should be standing in that picture. I panicked, and I couldn't believe what was going on here. I then said, you're your son, Mike. He has good grades, and he's good at magic. Ch oh, the box. I thought that everyone was playing a prank with me or something, but he looked extremely confused and even terrified. He looked at me as if I was some kind of lunatic. So I ran upstairs to check the box, and I opened the door thinking that I must be dreaming. The room was full of bookshelves and beanbags, all in a circle. It was just a cozy reading room. I was horrified. I kept saying, no, it, it can't be, over and over. At that moment, Josh came in the room. I thought, this is the last chance. I quickly took out my phone, thinking that I could remind Mike to them by showing selfies that I took with Mike before. However, just when I did, he was in none of the pictures. The one where I gave him a hug, where we went to the other friend's birthday party and took a picture with the clown, nothing was there. It was like he never even existed before, and I felt that moment was like a nightmare. To this day, there is literally no one who remembers Mike in my town. I still can't believe what happened to Mike, but I definitely believe that Mike is real, and he must be somewhere. My name is Kyla. This story is about a piano that was in my elementary school. When I was a kid, my friends and I used to record random videos in my school's basement. 